What's up, everyone? Oh, man. Sorry, I've been talking a lot the last three days. My voice is gone. I, hopefully, I can get through today and get this information to you. How's everybody doing? How did... Uh, Let's recap. If you want to share, if you were here for the first call, what you got out of that call, um, and if you prepared for today's call, if there's anything specific you want to make sure we cover in today's call. Anybody have anything they want to share? Ahas that you got, things like that. Got a bashful crowd today. Scott, this is your what? Third, fourth time through Ignite? Something, something like, yeah, I did I did you, I did you twice, and I did um, Hal Benz before you. But yeah, this will be this will be third. And I'm sorry I missed the first one. I just was uh, you know, Monday was a, a busy follow-up day for me. Is there anything uh, that you could share with people? Because I know here here's what I know and why I even asked you a question is. I see that you're really truly implementing things from each of these sessions. And I just know it, as a coach, it's probably even from going through it as many times as you're going through it, you're seeing more and more show up. Mm -hmm. Is there anything specific about either today's topic lead generation or like your database, what you've done over these last few ignites that's really been something that stands out to you as to what is driving your business and what you've got going on right now? Mm. Uh, yeah, I guess a couple things. Well, the, the big thing is, um, is consistent lead gen and consistently going out there and making the calls and, uh, um, following through it's, it's kind of not skipping around, but just plowing through doing that, you know, two or three hours and, um, and, and making the calls. I mean, it's just, you know, it's a numbers game. Yeah. I appreciate you sharing that. And guys, here's what I want to do. I want to kind of reset the stage a little bit from yesterday as well, just in case you missed the first session. What were this, this setup of a one hour session three times a week, we are having a mastery level discussion around the topics in Ignite. I mean, I'm giving it to you at a mastery level. I'm giving it to you at uh, me personally, 30 years of real estate, over 2,500 sales, uh, 20 consecutive years, 100 sales a year, and without a big monster team. My, my real estate team in Kansas City has been as big as nine people. However, it's also been as big as one person. So, um, you know, I just remember like a mega camp or something when Gary, uh, Gary Keller and Dave, or not Dave Jinx, it was, um, oh my gosh, I'm just like going blank here. Uh, anyway, talk, they were talking about... Um, your business expands and contracts. It was Jay. I got thrown off when I, Dave popped into my head and Dave's not with us anymore. It's a sad thing, but Jay, um, Dave, Gary and, and Jay talking about businesses expand and contract. And when you set up systems, it's not always about building a big team and just going bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. It's all, it all comes back to the MREA stuff that Gary talks about in this book, red light, green light holding dollars accountable. So everything that we're having, these conversations around these Ignite topics are at a mastery level, layering in all of the MREA stuff that I was able to comprehend and put into my business and translate things through. So when you're talking about consistency and stuff, today we're talking about lead generation. And I will tell you what, what I've seen with most people when I'm coaching some of the top, top agents in KW is that there's a lot of leads coming in, but are they really being captured? There's a lot of people that you're seeing in your community. Are you really capturing everyone and getting everyone in your database that you're meeting every single day? Because I'm going to give you two worlds. There's our real estate world, which is finding the next deal. And that is for sale by owners, expireds, open houses, all the traditional things that the industry teaches us to do. And that is very, you have to be very, very, oh, you have to be very, very consistent on making those calls regularly if you want to see results. You cannot decide to call for sale by owners one week because you went to a for sale by owner class and expect to be a specialist at for sale by owners. You have to do it every day for a long period of time. Or if let's just say, even in your business, you, you do FISBOs one day a week. 
Well, you have to do it one day a week, every week for like 100, 200, 300 weeks before you're going to get really great at FISBOs and have that be a major piece of your business. So one of the things that that I, I just remember going through training classes, you always hear top agents on stage talking about how, you know, they've had great success at for sale by owners or at, at uh, client appreciation parties or at this or at that. It, and understand that in this book, there were 28 people that made a million dollars in real estate. They're all actually in the back of the book. Um, there's interviews with all of them in the back of the book, right? That those people have done what they've done consistently, persistently for 10, 20, 30 years to make a million dollars. So I'm kind of taking you through this material at a mastery level, which hopefully what that will do for you is you're hearing this information that even if you've heard it before, you're hearing it differently than you've heard it before. And you're hearing it more in a way that you can actually apply it to your business or really just go like, okay, I think I'm getting it now. Now it's not just a great idea. It's a how to put it in play and make it happen. So I know I just went kind of deep on you right away, but we only have an hour. So um, let me pause out for a second and just see if there's anything triggering or firing up in your brain right now that has got you now thinking about lead generation, anything from the first course, talking about this at a mastery level or anything that I've just said that you want to jump in and just unmute yourself and go. Okay, so hi, I'm Susie Ward and um, I have a question for you. I, I hope it's uh, challenging enough to be at the mastery level, but um, I am from New York. I moved to New Jersey uh, because I had a job here and I was going to every day and it was just easier if I had moved here. So I know a fine, like a, a small amount of people. Um, and uh and so I, I find that that's my challenge. Um, I don't know. I didn't grow up here. I haven't been here for five, 10 years. I don't have kids, you know, where I'm part of the PTA. <clears throat> so um, aside from making my FISBO and expired calls, I, um, I joined the um, Chamber of Commerce. Um, I'm going, I'm, I'm going to pick one community group to volunteer in, but is there anything else you can suggest? I mean, I go to the gym, but <laughs> you can't meet people and really uh, effectively tell them that you're a real estate agent. You yeah. know, they have their AirPods in and they're yeah, working no, out. So. I appreciate it, Susie. And there is no not mastery level enough for this. Okay. Everybody's at all different levels in here. We're just having a conversation from being in the material for over, what, 15, 20 years now. I can translate it and make it fit. So here's the thing. Guys, listen, this is for everything. And Susie did not even set this up knowing that today was lead generation day. She probably came to this because of the lead generation title. And here's what I'm going to tell you. So there is two worlds in real estate. There's the find the next deal and there's relationship-based marketing. That is everybody that you know or who knows you. And this method is a way slower process to get your business built up and going over the long run, which is why a lot of people don't focus on the list of people that they already know. And people like working with people they know, like, and trust. We had that exact same slide in the session last, uh, just on Monday, a couple of days ago. They like, they like somebody they know. And if they trust you, and once you build up your confidence that you know enough about real estate to be a go-to person for them, you don't have to know all the answers, but you're, you know enough to be the go-to person, right? They would rather work with somebody they know, like, and trust. I'm going to cut my background noise out here for a second. Hey, no barking. Got my my guard dogs up there at the front door. Somebody's probably outside. Um, oh, I forgot one thing too. I bought. I have a dog, so I go to the dog park, and I, you know, hey, I met a buyer that way. So, um. <laughs> cool. No, this is perfect. So the one method is the people that you know, like, and trust. Now, what I'm about to talk to you about, Susie, is everybody. It has to do with everything we're going to cover today, and that is the the lead generation side of 
finding the next deal and meeting people. What I want you to do is layer these two, or not really connect these two by just saying every single person that you come in contact with on the planet Earth that we are on today, from this day forward, I would love to see you all just turn this radar on in your brain that says, if you see a person, you're not even talking about real estate. I'm at the dog park, right? That person with the dog next to me, and we all kind of look at each other and our dogs are sniffing and we're like, ah, that person is moving in the next five to 10 years, right? It's a total stranger. So we've got our lead generation where we're a realtor looking for business. We don't like to necessarily sell or hound people uh, about real estate all the time, be that pesky salesperson with people that we know, yet people that we know and that they like us and trust us will call us and do business with us without us being pesky. So on one end, you don't have to talk about real estate. You actually probably have to reignite your relationship with them first and just be human to human living in the same community. And then just make sure today what we're talking about is capturing them and getting them in your system and cultivating them until they decide to move in five years or 10 years. So Susie, what I'm going to say about the dog walker, the, the person with the dog next to you, and I know for a fact you are talking to some of the, there, there's words being exchanged between the people that have other dogs, right? So now yeah. your, your goal and your conversation is not about, oh, by the way, I'm a real estate agent. Are you thinking about buying or selling? No, it's about, well, where do you live? How close are you here? How often do you come to the park? Do you get involved in anything else in the community? Is there anything else you do with your dogs, Right. And so that's the kind of conversations we start having because they know that will lead to a name and a, a name at least, right? It mm -hmm. might even, if you're really good at this, lead to a, net, well, let's exchange phone numbers. Have you guys ever been at like a sporting event or at the dog park and you've exchanged phone numbers with a person standing next to you that you've never met before? So that's what we're going to do every single day with every single person that we ever come in contact with just as naturally and casually as that one time, right? And we're just gonna find a reason or a purpose that we would wanna stay connected. You don't even have to mention real estate yet. You haven't even earned the right to talk about real estate with them yet. Even if you tried to press the real estate conversation in this particular conversation that we're talking about, dog park or the sporting event, right? In this particular context, if I'm shoving real estate in there too quick, and they're not thinking about buying or selling, which by the way, how many people of everyone we meet over the next week, if you met a hundred people in the next week or the next month, whatever you think that number is, how many of those people are moving this month? You guys remember the number from yesterday or Monday? One. <laughs> One or two. So the next hundred people that I could casually capture their number and casually collect them and capture and get them in and cultivate, knowing that 98 of them are not buying or selling real estate, I'm not even going to start, I'm not even going to lead out with the real estate conversation. And if I actually did that with 100 people over the next month, which is five people a day, by the way, if I did that with five people a day, the one or two out of those 100 that are doing something with real estate are going to step up. It's going to come up, even if you never said you were a realtor, they're going to figure it out because we just real estate is our lifestyle. So we talk about it and we maybe don't even know we're talking about it. Or once they get your note and they get the next thing, if you captured them and you're cultivating every single person, it could be within a day or two, they get something from you and go, she's a real estate agent. We're moving. <laughs> right. So right. that, that may naturally come up in the conversation and it may not. I will tell you if somebody's thinking about buying or selling and you're just in general conversation, you're going to naturally ask some questions that would pull that out of them anyway. <laughs> and that is, <clears throat> and that is when you're going to say, wow, oh, well, it's amazing that we met today. There must've been, you know, karma or, or not right. karma. Um, you know what I'm saying? It, it was meant to be that we were meeting today because I'm a real estate agent as well. But the point that I'm getting at is the other 98 people, even if we push the real estate first and we used a standard script of, you know, hey, this is Brad Corn with Keller Williams. I'm, you know, asking if you're thinking about buying or selling real estate. If we already know 98% of them are not moving, then they're, it's going to go nowhere anyway. So just forget that for now when you're building your relationship base. 
Now I want to switch gears because after I do that throughout the day and I get my five relationships for the day in and for any, for all purposes, if it's a dog park, my whole follow-up system could be all about dog tips and where the best dog groomers are in town, where the best parks are, where the best dog events are coming up. It doesn't even have to be about real estate, right? So yeah. you can you can layer some real estate stuff in there. Maybe once a quarter, they get something from you about what the market's doing, or you have fun with it where you have a post about, oh my gosh, look at this dog friendly listing that we just saw go on the market today. Oh, what? I'm a mark. Oh, you're, she's a realtor, right? right? So you can build this list faster than even most people that are sitting in a market that they've been in for a long time, Susie. Now you, you are starting from ground zero. That is tough. And so it is getting into relationships and just talking to people and, and all that. And, but it is going to be capturing them, getting them on a follow-up system so that you're going to be on purpose about sending them some stuff, calling them again, touching base with them, finding them on social media, and just live your life and community around whatever it is. Whether yeah. that's so a, a perfect example is church. And I'll, and I'll pause after this so you can add to that. Church. Oh my gosh, I don't want to use the church roster and then just start hounding people about real estate. Great. Why don't you use the church roster and get involved in church and be involved in some of the groups that they're doing? Or you don't even have to get involved if you don't have time. You're just supporting the group. If there's a food shelter in your church, you're showing up with a case of canned goods that you collected, right? So it's just supporting those people in those roles and then real estate will come out of it. I'll pause for a second if you have anything you want to add or ask. Well, I just know at the dog park um, or, you know, something local in the neighborhood, if you get into a, a casual conversation um, and say, where do you, do you live around here? You know, if they're moving, that's going to that that conversation's going to come up quickly, you know, about real estate. You yeah. know, oh, yeah, we live on X Street, but we're getting ready to move. We're thinking about moving. Um, so those are good inroads to casually bring it in to the conversation um but anyway yeah no i i am um, i think that i'm on the right track i just wanted to know if there's any other yeah yeah no you are you're going to be building this list slowly but surely i have no idea why my powerpoint is totally flipping out did you guys just see it race through all the slides yeah yeah, we're done. You guys just had the whole course in a matter of seconds. <laughs> um, and you're good. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. I do not know. I've never seen it do that before. But hey, that's technology. Sometimes we get it. Um, okay, so we're going to figure out here slideshow. We try it again one more time from this slide. Let me try that. Yeah, I don't know what it's doing. It's like flying through it and then shutting down here. Let me do this and try one more thing. So you guys, we, we basically just did the fastest quick overview of the entire course for today. So I hope you were actually listening to it. And I hope that as we go through the material in the book, when you see this now, you are going to see just how to apply this stuff. So now I've got to get tricky and I have no idea what is happening here but we're gonna make it work, so. All right, can you guys see the screen okay? And this is more just to follow along with. Um... We can't see anything, only see your face. Yeah. yeah, okay, cool. So if you're in Spark 2 and you have the manual, we're just gonna run through some things. You're gonna hear me just repeat a lot of what we just spent the last you know, 15 minutes talking about. It's all in here and we're gonna kind of jump over. Well, first of all, for those of you that are just joining us now, the way uh, uh, Ignite is set up is there's the Spark sessions, there's nine Spark, ses Spark sessions, and then there's nine elements. And those are about growing your business in the Spark. It's, we're gonna talk about the lead generating for buyers, sellers, listing presentations. Anytime you guys have a point where you wanna jump in and ask a question or get clarity around something, honestly, do whatever it takes to cut me off because I get going and I get talking and I'm just like, bah, 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 bah. I'm trying to get you a lot of information in an hour. Thank um, you. Yes. Yeah. So just jump in. Do I have somebody as a question now before we get going? Just to make sure. Okay. Well, so, which, which document are we supposed to be in again? I'm sorry. This one is Spark 2. 
and it's on the lead generation. And I think I still have my screen up there too. So it's the second session. We just started yesterday. And we basically talked about yesterday was your database is your business. And we talk about that a little bit more today. As we go through, we're going to cover all these different materials. Did you find the right thing that you want to follow through on? And if you don't yes. have it, Leo, just follow through on the screen. It'll be good. Um, one suggestion I would make is that when you guys, if you don't have the link to the manuals to download them ahead of time, um, make sure you email your market leader, leader or um, our, our coaching team here, whatever, and get the link to the Ignite. You should have gotten it if you registered, um, got on the registration list. And you can, I would suggest downloading Spark 3 today after the class and either going through it, just skimming through it sometime between now and Friday when we meet up again, just skim through the material. Then when we go through the material, we're, we're going over it at a, at a high level in an hour. We're going over it at a mastery level. And then whatever notes you guys took down today. And also it's good to write your questions down so you don't forget to ask me about them. Even if you forget during class, you can send them to me later and we'll probably still bring them up in class. But go back through your notes after the session's over and review the material again. So you've actually heard it three times in your head and you're seeing how your notes applied to what we just covered in the class. And then, like I said, you review Spark 3 before Friday. And then when we go through the material, just it's going to sink in a little more. <clears throat> we know in training, most people probably don't remember 25% of what's covered. So the more you can immerse yourself in the material, knowing that it really is probably an eight week commitment that we have night, we have 18 sessions and we're running at an hour every two days. Um, it's a commitment, but it, it will give you the biggest payoff uh, from that. All right, let's see if I've got my slides still set up right here. All right, so what we're gonna focus on today is this lead generating for buyers and sellers, which Susie brought up. We're gonna actually talk about that today. That's the lead generation model. So earlier we were just talking about the, this funnel that's in the book is about capturing. And if you kind of look towards the bottom, the middle, it says cultivate, and what happens is when you capture local people in your community, and there's two different types of people, there's leads and then there's contacts. And most real estate agents lean their business towards the leads where we're either putting marketing out there with a headline of some sort and a call to action that will get them to click and ask for more information. Hey, everybody would love that business. When my daughter got her real estate license, she was in the, in the service industry, a bartender. She went and got a real estate license because she had three or four people that were thinking about buying or selling real estate. She's like, oh, my dad's one of the top realtors in town. I'll go get my license and help you buy one. She helped those three or four people. The week she got out of real estate school, she made like four sales in her first month. After the first month, she came back to me and she said, dad, here's the deal. I really like real estate, but can you like, Get them all set up, get them like whatever through their lender, get them approved. I mean, if you can get them to the point where all they want to do is go look at a couple of houses and write a contract, that's when I would like to take them over. <laughs> How many of you are laughing right now going, yeah, that's me, right? Uh, I mean, I would course, love to do that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. I mean, who wouldn't want that business, right? <clears throat> and so I'll, I'll even split my commission. Yeah, exactly. Guys, that's what's called an ISA team, right? Inside sales team. So what we do is with leads is when leads are coming in and we got internet leads coming in, all this stuff, I can tell you that that method of business, if you build your whole business on it, if you do it consistently and persistently enough, like Scott just shared with us earlier, you will see success from it. And, but I can tell you right now, it's been at least a year since Scott and I first crossed paths. And I think he was doing it a couple of times before that. And I bet you, you're probably, what would you guess? Two, three times, maybe four times more successful now at what you're doing than what you were a year ago, Scott. Yeah. So because a year ago, he was really just starting out in it and trying it probably wasn't consistent. And he's figured that out over time. So that is a, that is a working 
path and you're going to work. You might as well envision yourself clocking in. You're the worst bot, you're the meanest boss on the planet. You clock in on time at nine o'clock and you clock out at 4 p.m. and you work and you can build a business that way. But if you never clock in and you kind of show up whenever and you just stay for an hour or two or even 30 minutes or you skip a couple of days, that, that method is what I'm going to call the grindstone to real estate because you'll just always be grinding it out, grinding it out, grinding it out. Now, here's what I'm gonna go back to on the contact site. While you're grinding it out, because when you first get into real estate, you gotta get some deals going. I mean, we're already starting out in the hole with our license and school and all that other stuff. But when you are grinding it out, if you will keep the other 98 of the 100 people that you grind it out with and put them as a contact, that I'm not going to hammer them with a whole bunch of real estate follow-up things. They are going to be a relationship building contact that's not moving right now. But this is what most agents don't do. They don't keep those. They get the one or two that are ready to do something and forget the other 98. Well, then you got to go back to the grindstone again and call another 100 people to get the one or two and they blow off the 98. Guys, right there in just 200 people in that example, I have 192 people that are absolutely moving in the next three, five, seven, 10 years. 198 people that I talked to, put the energy forth to be in front of them, to ask them about real estate. And I didn't do anything with them. So it's about capturing every single contact. And that's why this funnel, if you're in the old MREA book, it was cultivate was kind of out to the side because our industry taught us to close. You get them contact, get them captured to close them, right? So now in the cultivate, you're cultivating the relationship and it's a five to 10 year relationship. So now think about that from now on, every single person that you come in contract, contact with in your community after today, they are your three to five to 10 year plan for real estate. They're your 10 year plan. And if you're going to be out in the community anyway, doing it every single day, and you just started capturing and collecting those people now and just dripping on them, not for real estate stuff, but just staying in touch with them, keeping your name in front of them, you're going to build a pipeline over about two or three years that if you just did this with five people a day, that's 25 people a week, it's 100 people a month, that's 1,200 people a year. So if I'm consistent and persistent and I do five a day, no matter what, five days a week, take two days off, right? If I made that my clock in thing, in one year, you will have 120 to 240 people that will be moving. In one year, 120 to 240, can't make the number up. I'm not pushing the number. I'm not making it sound better than it is. It is a reality. If they're moving every five to 10 years, there will be 120 to 240 people moving. Granted, some of those people will be renting, take, take 20, 30 off of that. You're going to always have about 100 deals within one year of doing capture and cultivate. Now, once you cultivate them, like this is showing here, you're going to either set an appointment, they're going to become an active buyer or seller, they're going to write a contract, and they're going to close on real estate. But you can't get from meeting them, prospecting and marketing to appointment and close very often. It's a very, very low percentage. I keep moving my, oh, there we go. So that's what we talked about there. Any questions about this before I move on? This, it, it, am I explaining this in a different way that you're like kind of a little more excited about lead generation now? To know that- Are you saying- true. Yeah, go ahead. Are you saying, so are you saying that basically just reach out to five old friend of yours. It's like, hey, what's going on? I'm just checking to see how you're doing, blah, blah, blah. How's life, la, la, la. Just five times a day, just do that. What you're just saying? That. That's like a That's like a half an hour- text message information yeah to let them know that i'm around that's it yeah and i'm i'm glad you threw in text message we want a two-way conversation keep it casual way. yeah keep keep it casual but guys listen to this layer in the real estate part like be on purpose that when you have that casual conversation yeah they're like how are you doing what's going on i'm like oh nothing i'm a realtor now but yeah I, but still but but the back of the mind a smart person should be like uh-huh I haven't yeah. heard from you in like 10 years. And all of a sudden you come out of the blue right. saying, how are you doing? And I right. ask you what you're doing. It's like, I'm a realtor, which is true. I'm not lying. But then they're wondering what your intentions are. I was just talking to a friend of mine. She's like, one of the things that realtors 
are known for is that they're disingenuine. Like they're reaching out out of nowhere and they just casually throw in that they're a realtor. Like we're like, hmm, are you reaching out because you're just kind of fishing or are you genuinely curious as to how I am considering I haven't spoken to you in 10 years? Man. That's one of the, and I'm not that kind of person to be disingenuine, but I generally do care, but you know, it is what it is. That's the industry that we're in, I'm assuming. At the same but. time, some people are nice also. They will talk to you and they will go through it. Depend on the each person. Guys, listen to this conversation. I, I mean, everybody's relating to exactly what you're saying. And it's also confirming with me that you heard what I was saying earlier when we were talking about this. Yeah. Start the conversation. Now, I'm going to throw in a mastery level behind it. Be you, be the conversation, let it happen. Which, by the way, we're also, I'm going to give you a way to download a reconnect plan for command. If you use command, it's in the library and you'll be able to download it. We'll come to that in just a little bit. That is a way to set it up for you to able, you're able to reconnect with the people that you haven't talked to as well that I think you'll all love. But in this context right now, just the, the two-way conversation, whether it's reconnecting or, or just bumping into somebody, the layer right behind it, be yourself, convert, converse, two-way, casual, that's it. You got it. You nailed it. Now, the conversation's over, the person turns to walk away or the conversation stopped. Now, realtor Brad needs to kick in. Now, Brad needs to go, what was their name? How do I find their address? Can I track down a phone number for them if I didn't get it out of the conversation? And you may not have earned it out of that first conversation, right? So again, what most people feel is exactly what you said. The reason why most real estate agents don't call their list first is because they don't want to be the pushy salesperson looking for real estate deals. Now, I take that back. Most people are when they first get out of real estate school. The first 100 people on their 100-person list that we used to create in real estate, they got the call. By the time you get through 100 calls and your friends are just like, ah, oh, geez, here we go, another real estate call. It's almost like you're, you're doing a network marketing class, right? Not that I don't have anything against network marketing. I love the model of network marketing, but it's like you're just a network marketer <laughs> selling another product or service. And so most real estate agents shy away from the people they know because they don't want to be that person. So they're going to go talk to strangers and try and convince them to like them and trust them to do business with them and entrust them with probably the biggest equity thing they own in their life, their house and their equity and finding a home and all that other stuff. So those two things just don't make sense to me. When I figured out, it's like, well, if everybody's moving, I don't like necessarily talking to strangers. I could do it all day long. I'll get on the phone with a FISBO and I'll convert the most out of everybody in that class, right? But I'm telling you, it's more fun to talk to people I know, like, and trust, build this pipeline. And now I'm fortunate enough after 20 years of, 20, 30 years of doing this, I didn't get it the first five years. But after 20, 25 years of doing this, my phone just rings. I mean, the, people are just calling for advice. And they're calling, hey, we're thinking about doing this. We thought we better run it past you first. Forward Just, some calls to us. Yes, yes. <laughs> forward some calls to us. What's that? You're getting so many calls. Forward to us some of them. Yes. I, I'm telling you guys, I created this class. Everything I revolved this around. I actually have a class called, it was a, it was a MAPS Fast Track course. I don't know if any of you went through it. It was called Make the Phone Ring Again. It literally taught you how to put these people, capture them in, cultivate them, and the phone will ring because we don't know if they're moving in next month, three years, five years, seven years, 10 years. So if I keep in touch with them over the 10 years, I'm not necessarily calling them the day they're deciding to do something, but they're calling me the day they're deciding to do something because I've kept in touch with them and I didn't always make it about real estate. So I just heard somebody say, and I can't remember where it was, but they said, do you realize, oh, it was uh, an agent in our Topeka Keller Williams office. He posted his numbers from when he got in in 2011 to where he is today. And he's like, can you believe we actually get paid just to go out and be friends with people all day long? <laughs> I mean, this is what we're talking about today is just becoming and plugged into your community. So yeah, somebody like Susie's got to start from ground zero. So every little group that you can join in, and if you take the two-way conversation and then you let put a real estate agent behind it that's on purpose about if I'm going to capture, if I'm going to capture them, 
I need their phone number and their address. And now I'm gonna pause for a second because this again is where the real estate agent finding the next deal pops into our relationship person that we're talking about. Because I gotta have their address and their phone number. And then somebody usually says, well, what do you do? Just say, hey, I wanna keep in touch with you. Can I have your address and your phone number? No, that's not a connection call, okay? That's a cold call. So it's still, it's you're gonna find when you start doing this that the two worlds collide a lot. And it's like, well, and then you shy away from the people you know again, because you're trying to layer that real estate agent in there. I, I'm hoping that what you guys hear is 98 to 99% of the people you're talking to are not gonna need your services right now. So don't worry about it. Just make sure that, you know that 98 to 99% of them will need your services. And it might be next month and it might be a year from now and it might be three years from now. So capture them, cultivate them, and you're gonna be there when they do get ready to do something. I'm telling you, it's, it is the difference. It is the absolute difference of really truly selling hundred properties a year and building a big real estate business or getting stuck in the grind zone, grindstone of real estate. So yeah, I mean, command is set up to capture everything where you can get name, address, phone number. If Whether you're using command or something else, I mean, whatever database you're using, I do want to make sure we, I think we'll talk about this in the next, in one of the future classes is database versus contact management. And a database, I, I like to think of it like an Excel spreadsheet, a place to put the name, address, phone number, the contact information for the person, maybe even some notes in it but it's not a management system that tells me it's time to follow up again. So that's what command is, is a management system that if you get campaigns or action plans in command, it's called smart plans. When you create a smart plan and you just literally say, like right now, over the next week, whoever you meet with this new filter of, oh my gosh, I just have to have a two-way conversation with these people. So now that I've captured them, what the heck do I do with them? What do I put them on? What's the drip plan? Just think of the person in the context that they're in and go, how would I, what would be the ideal way to follow up with this person to stay in touch with them? I mean, they're not doing real estate right now. So what's my follow-up? So you get to design that, right? And you design it in a smart plan. So here's what I will tell you is absolutely a part of it is future phone calls. So in, for example, in an eight by eight, which is eight touches in eight weeks, there's two phone calls at week four and week eight. So you meet somebody four weeks later, they get a phone call from you. Don't shortcut that. And they get another phone call from you in eight weeks. Whatever else is in between really doesn't matter. I'm going to tell you it doesn't matter because I know that the content and whether it's an email or a letter or whatever, isn't going to matter. It's those two phone calls that when you say, well, what am I going to say? It's, I just met them four weeks ago. We'll say whatever you would say to somebody in your community that you met four weeks ago. Hey, it was so great connecting with you a few weeks ago. They're not even going to remember it was four weeks, right? They don't know what the plan is, but Hey, I just thinking of you today. And I just had to say, it was so great connecting with you. Glad everything's good. You too. I got your note in the mail. That was awesome. Oh yeah, yeah, no, it's just really great meeting with you. Look forward to keeping in touch. Now week eight might roll around and if stuff has been going out in between when I call them, that conversation can go anywhere at that point. I mean, it might be they know somebody is thinking about real estate because what happened over eight weeks of this cultivate, probably should move on to our cultivate screen. Um, we're going to come back to that. Uh, I don't know if I have the cultivate in there. In the cultivate part of it, <clears throat> in eight weeks, if you have an eight by eight going and you met somebody, had a two-way conversation, didn't hound them about real estate, 98% of them weren't buying, you get a handwritten note, it's so nice meeting you, loved your smile, loved your laugh, whatever, the dog park is amazing, love this community, something like that, right? And then they get their other touches and a phone call comes in at week four. By week eight, what happens over those eight weeks Anyone and everyone that says the word real estate around them, they just saw your face flash in front of their, their, in their mind. It's in their subconscious. You are branded. You have got the real estate spot locked up. The purpose of a 33 or 36 touch is to keep you there so you don't drift off, but you don't have to call them every four weeks. You now can call them once a quarter and just keep your name in there because you've already branded yourself. Now, if you back off now, you'll lose that. You'll lose that. 
And I've taken, I've talked a lot about an example of brands. In, in fact, we might just play this right now <clears throat> that we're talking about marketing. And I hope, I hope if we do it again, then we'll just do it again. But I'm going to give you, you guys a product. And I'm actually just going to randomly pick somebody. So if you unmute, let, let me tell you. Uh, so we're going to unmute three people. We're going to unmute uh, Nora. If you can unmute, great. If you don't have background noise. Uh, Louisa, it looks like you are unmuted and we're going to pick, um, Anthony, maybe if he can unmute. And if I see you guys unmute, you can play. If not, there we go. We got Anthony, Louisa. How about you, Leo? Why don't you unmute since I got you right here? Nora might not be in a place where she can unmute. Okay. Everybody's going to play this game, but I'm going to pick one person at a time. And Leo's going to be our first candidate. I'm going to give you a product and I just want you to name off as many brands as you could think of, of that product. It's not a real hard test and there are no right or wrong, but so you guys all listen in, nobody participate. I'm going to come to um, Louisa and I think it was Anthony. Uh oh, we might have lost Anthony. I'm not sure. Uh, I'll come to you guys on the next one. So Leo, if I said tennis shoes, name as many brands as you can think of as fast as possible. Uh, Nike, Adidas, uh, New Balance, uh, Puma. Okay. No, that's good. That's good. Okay. All right, Anthony, I'm coming to you. I see you on the screen here. So I'm going to give you an easy one. Potato chips. Name as many brands you can think of. Uh, Doritos, Lay's, uh, Cheetos. Uh, okay. Good, good, good. Now, I think we got Louisa still is unmuted. Are you there to play the game with us? Yes, I'm here. All right. So I'm going to give you toothpaste, as many brands as you can think of. Mm, Colgate. I'm not sure. Yeah, no, that's good. All right, guys. So here's what you just experienced. National Board of Realtors says that 78% of all sellers talk to one, one agent and they list their house. About 12% or 14% talk to a second agent and list their house, or maybe it's 19%. 92% of sellers would talk to one or two agents and list their house. So you have to become the Nike, the Lays, and the Crest. Now, how many of you were saying Lays, right, when I said potato chips? Um, so most people say Lays. And if you are Adidas or you are behind Colgate, like many of you said Colgate or Crest under toothpaste, you have to become the Nike, the Lays, and the Crest of, of real estate when they think of real estate. So when I say my phone rings all the time, it's just because I'm in front of them all the time. I'm not pounding real estate on them. I'm not anything, but they know the corn team is real estate. And they know that when they get ready to do real estate, they're going to call me for advice first. So that's how my phone rings more consistently. So if you get that spot and your Nike lays in crest, right? Um, Adidas is second, right? So it's going to get an opportunity some of the time. And if you don't keep that spot locked in, you'll drop down to that Adidas. And it doesn't mean you won't get an appointment. You just, if I tracked how many people said Doritos versus Lay's, I mean, Anthony probably would have went with the number two agent that most of you would have went with the number one agent 78% of the time. So what we want to do is just be the first one that they think of when they think of that, right? So does that make sense? That's really what we're doing so that when, the, and you'll earn the real estate spot over time, 98% of them aren't moving right now anyway. So you don't need to prove to them how, how awesome you are in real estate. You need to do that when they get ready to do something. All right. So I did want to talk about um, just this different types of marketing, prospecting based versus marketing enhanced. And what it used to be marketing world, it used to mass marketing, um, taking on a neighborhood, uh, farming a neighborhood with postcards. Most of the agents in the MREA book, when they look at the 50 to one return out of the Haven't Met database, that's about a 2% return. 2% return on mass marketing is unheard of in the marketing world. It's more like a 0.25% return, a quarter percent return. Meaning if I spend $10,000 on a mass mailing, I might get a quarter of that back. But when you do it over a long period of time, consistent and persistent for 10 years, you're gonna start getting a bigger return. So a lot of the agents in the haven't met database, we're not seeing 2% conversion rate 
from calling strangers and doing your real estate business. What that was based on is people that have been in business for 20, 30 years, they're now making a million dollars selling real estate. So not only do they have 20 to 30 years of community cross-reference, but their mass marketing is working better because they're so well-connected in the community and they're getting a better return. So what that shows here is it is still a prospecting based business and a marketing enhanced business. You can gain some leverage with that marketing. And what I'm telling you is most real estate agents start with the marketing first. They start FISBOs, expireds, and marketing to them and trying to get this call, to, this headline in their marketing piece with a call to action that's going to get them all to call us. And that's a marketing based market marketing program. What we know is if you go back to the prospect base, there, it's going to take a lot less money. It's definitely going to take more time, but it's proactive. It's, be, it's building a pipeline of business, knowing that they're all going to move eventually. So let me pause out for one second. Guys, I'm giving this to you at a mastery level. How many of you are really thinking about this whole prospecting and marketing thing a little bit different now? How many of you are just a little more excited about this Facebook friends list and the cell phone list that you have of people who you have talked to or they have talked to you, right? Or they've tried to reach you and you've tried to reach them. I mean, for some reason, you guys are crossing paths and we know they're all going to move. Yeah, good stuff. So that's the biggest thing I can help you with today in your business is to help you understand that every single person from today forward, if you can capture them and get them in the database, capture them and get them in command. Command right now, guys. And again, we can't get into all the details of logging into command now and using it. I'm telling you, if you have a master list notebook, just a regular old notebook, college bound, college ruled notebook, and you start writing down every name of everybody on your Facebook friends list in that notebook and everybody in your cell phone, everybody you've sent an email to, everybody who sent you an email, your inbox, your outbox, right? Set folder. You just started writing down all those names and you get those all captured in one place. Then you can go through your notebook and see who you've got phone numbers for, who you've got addresses for. And that will, whoever you have a number and an address for would be my filter to start feeding into command every single day. And I'm just going to reconnect with them, which by the way, in command, I did say that I created in the library, it's called database cleanup. And if you do cleanup, if you search for cleanup or database cleanup and you look, there's two of them that will pop up, but one of them is from Brad Corn, and it's a simple uh, four or five step smart plan that says it's either a letter that you print out and I, I prefer you to send it in the mail versus email to make sure that you're reconnecting with people that you've gotten their address already. Once you get through everyone that you cannot find addresses, then we can start talking about email, but addresses are readily available everywhere. You have tax records. Three quarters of the list that you would create in this notebook are in tax records or they're in fastpeoplesearch.com, fastpeoplesearch.com. You're going to be able to put in their name and their city. Facebook, many times under their about, has their where they live now. So it's really it is easier than you think to find somebody's address. So if I open up my notebook and I have a phone number and an address and I see the name, this reconnect or database cleanup would start a campaign in command that says, check for address and phone number, right? So if you have that already, you mark it done. The next thing is say, send a letter that looks like this and you can just copy and paste the content into a Word document, print it off and drop it in the mail. And it basically says, hey, I realize I haven't talked to you in a while. I want to keep in touch with you. I'll give you a call in a few days. And if you're putting five of those letters in an envelope every single day and you're being consistent, just sending five of these a day, if you mail that, you've got a better chance of making that phone call. However, the smart plan will pop up in three days, four, three or four days. Hey, now you need to call this person. You just sent the letter that said you were going to call. Do not take that line out of the letter. Leave it in there. And what it'll do is allow you to start reconnecting with the database that you have right now. And or if you could cre create this notebook and you're pulling them into command, you can put them on a reconnect. So it basically just says, hey, I realize I haven't talked to you in a while. I'm going to give you a call in a few days. Want to catch up? And then now you it, it's really a mental game for ourselves that, oh, I can actually call them now because now they're expecting my call. Right. 
It's a setup for you to actually pick up the phone and call. And you might even say, hey, did you get my letter? You don't need to say that. Just say, you know, hey, it's Leo. I haven't talked to you in a while. I wanted to catch up and see how you're doing. Oh, yeah, we got your letter yesterday. Thank you so much. That's so great to hear your voice. Man, you're, gonna, you're not going to realize how many people are glad to hear from you. And then it's drop a note in the mail, right? And then we'll put them on the new plan, which would be the 8x8 plan or the 33 touch. Or if you don't reach them, you're scheduling that call for a later, later date, the next day or whatever. So the thing is, is that in your database, your contact management system command, it will tell you in your task what you need to do for the day. And it'll bring those calls up to the top of the list. So the capturing is capturing them in command. And if there's somebody that you're not connected with, there are so many cool things in command. Like it, it is the best haven't met database on the planet because I can just automatically set them up. If all I do have is their email, I can set them up on their neighborhood alert thing that will tell them what's going on in their neighborhood. And it just sends them stuff from command. So you can get everybody in. You could put everybody on a haven't met database plan in command until you connect with them and reconnect with them and then put them on an eight by eight and 33 touch. Hopefully I've explained that well enough um, that you guys understand the difference between a lead and a contact. And in here, in our material, in MREA2, we talk about truly a lead is somebody that's just, it's 19 touches, it's better than once a month, but these are people that you're not really connected with. You're just sending out information. Maybe it's past clients that you haven't talked to in a year. However, if you move them over to reconnect with them first and write them a handwritten note, do the real true eight by eight, and then move them into a 36 touch, that's going to convert that pipeline over time and really keep you a lot more closer in contact with them. So in command, you're going to have your contacts where if you just, if you just start, if somebody on here is challenged with command, or you're not sure if you like command, just try for three months to add five people every day, five days a week. If you really absolutely hate it, you've done it every day, five days a week for a month and you hate it, then you probably need to find yourself a different contact management system. What you're going to see, though, is if you do it for three months, you will have already figured out how to use it regularly now. You won't be uncomfortable with it because you're just adding people, five people a day. Don't worry about what else happens behind that. Just feed five people in a day for three months. If you did that, you would have 300 people in command. Now, by then, you probably are starting to figure out you're in command a little bit more because now nothing's happening with these people you're adding. So you're like, hey, wait, what's that neighborhood thing? Or you'll see a class and all of a sudden you go, oh, I get it because I got people in there. I can do that. I can set up this and that. And you start adding more things to it. If you never start doing five a day, you'll never, ever use command on a regular basis and know how to use it. But it is all about adding contacts. So this gets into the details of what color to put them in. Don't even, you're not even there yet, right? You can go back in and clean up your database in three months. It'll be way easier to clean up 300 contacts in three months when you decide this thing really does work because the next stage would be to add an action plan to those three to those 300 people. And you're only gonna add an action plan to five people today, five people tomorrow, five people the next day. So you're gonna spread that out over time to spread out the calls and spread out the stuff to do. You're not thinking in bulk. So then you can go back in at the end of your first year, if you really did five people a day, you'd have 1200 contacts in your database. By then, you either really know command well and you know what the color-coded things mean. You know how to tag people. You're going to know how to do smart views. You're going to know all that stuff that you can go back through at the end of your first year and clean it up. And then, sorry, guys, you get to do it again next year. Five more dog park people next year that aren't in there yet. Five more people, five more people. And you keep going until you get 2,400 people in your second year and you get 3,600 people in your third year. Guys, if you did this for five years, here's what we know about the numbers. This is straight from Gary Keller. If, if I could get every agent to put 6,000 relationships in their database, relationships in their database, we would all be millionaires because 1,200 people a first year 24th, second year, 6,000 people in five years, five-year commitment, five a day, five years, you would have 6,000 people. 
If they're moving every 10 years, it's 600 transactions. If they're moving every five years, it's 1,200 transactions. You have just created a recession-proof million-dollar real estate business just by adding the people you're having two-way conversations with. So I really didn't, I don't want to get into all these custom views in command because you won't remember 90% of that at this point if you're not using it. And there's a lot more classes going on that are a lot more de detailed. Ah, there's my sales pipeline. That's the cultivate. You're just going to nurture and qualify people because calls are going to be popping up on a quarterly basis during the 36 touch. And during that call, you're just calling and checking it, And here's what's going to happen. That qualified, somebody's going to say, hey, I am curious, you know, what my house might be worth in this crazy market. I'm hearing about things getting multiple offers. And that's where you get to now move into that conversation. So again, the smart plans, I've got one in there. It's called database cleanup. If you go in there, search for that database cleanup, shoot me an email or text if you can't find it. Um, I don't know where my chat is. I'm going to put a couple of things in here in the chat. First of all, oh, I've got to move my camera a little bit. Fastpeoplesearch.com was the one thing that I gave you. Uh, cornteamkc at gmail.com is my email. If you have any questions, my cell Ben phone. Verified is good too. Yes, go ahead. Ben Verified is good too. Yes, Ben Verified. Yes, the thing I, I do use Ben Verified and it does get me to a screen eventually that I really do like and can provide some information. So it's about multiple sources. I don't like how long it sits there and churns. Fast people search, I can do a reverse search on their phone number and it will show me every address they've ever had and every phone number. And I know Ben Verified does that too. Um, that's a great, great point to be, make though. There are all kinds, they're, they're going to ask you to sign up for things for a buck a month, two bucks a month. Doesn't seem like very much. There's enough free information out there, either between a, your, yeah, go ahead. I have a question. Sorry to interrupt. Yep. So I know that when it comes to going to do like a lease, what I have found is also look into um, uh, finding the owners of, like, for example, if a property has been leased out, right? Like a year ago, and it's a one-year lease like a few months or a couple of months prior to that lease expiring, I'll contact the landlord using Ben Verified to get their phone number. Yep. And I'll reach out to them that way. Or other question is, is there also a way of doing, I think there's a way of doing a search on home properties of you know the last 10 years, the last purchase for this amount or two bedroom, whatever in this town, can you do that? And then maybe do cold calls specifically to those people who've been living there for like, seven to 10 years, like if they're willing, if you want to do a cold call, so just randomly calling people to have it more of a catered phone call if you're doing cold calls, so that way you're not wasting your time on something you just bought a house. Yeah. All right. So everything you just said is so awesome and perfect to a perfect way for us to close out the session. You guys will see a barcode on your screen if you want to shoot that with your phone. That is the survey for today's class to let your leadership know you like this class today. You like the material that we covered and or just what you're getting out of it. But this this comes up to my list. So, again, a lead versus a contact. If I'm being on purpose and seeking out owners of secondary market or like investment properties and trying to get those. That is something that I work on. So the way my day would look like, I would do my normal connections first with my contacts. I'd make my calls, I'd make, write my notes, I'd do all that stuff. That all takes about a half an hour to an hour. Then I turn into real estate agent that's gonna go find the next deal. I just wanna make sure you flip these around the right way and focus on the relationships in your community first Make those foremost most important because that is your five to 10 year plan where you will never have to find another lead the rest of your career if you do that, if you get 6,000 people. But once I'm done with that, I've still got six hours, seven hours of the day if I'm working eight hour days, right? So grab in and when you're going to that, what I usually say is before I even start targeting that list, I would rather write out a timeline of what my follow-up communication would look like if I were to get a hold of an owner that owned investment property and is out of the area, what would be the ideal way to follow up with them? How often do I want to follow up with them? What kind of information would I want to give them to get them to earn their trust that they would call me to get some more information about the property, right? And hopefully I'm answering your question here. 
So I would look at that and go, okay, if once I find their information, what am I going to do? Just call them out of the blue? Or do I want to send them something ahead of time to soften the blow? And I can call them. And if they don't answer, is there something that comes behind it? And then the next call is already scheduled to follow up that piece to see if they answer it the second time. So like when you're looking at this now, this is where we get to play fun real estate agent. If that were me and I'm setting that plan up, which by the way, I've done this exact same plan is I went by and I took a picture of the property and I put that on a postcard or a note that just said, have you seen your house here in Kansas city lately? This was a picture I just took a couple of days ago. So I would send them that, right? Maybe they don't even know what's going on with their property here. But again, to back to your question is, if you don't know where to find them, there's lots of sources to find them. A lot of times in our tax records, uh, they're listed, whatever. It's going to be different for everybody. You're not going to find everybody's address. You just keep doing the research until you find it. I'll give you guys a general rule of thumb. This is your bonus, bonus rule of thumb that has made me a ton of money in real estate. I will spend up to five minutes for every human name sitting on my desk to figure out if I can find an address, find a phone number. And honestly, you haven't heard me say much about email. I don't even want to find their email because I just know I'm not probably going to communicate with most of them by email. It's phone number and address. And five minutes is a long time. I mean, that's Googling, that's Facebooking, that's fast people searching, that, that's uh, been verified. I mean, it's all of them. I'm using everything. I'm digging, digging, digging. I can spend five minutes and come up with Zippo. Like I cannot find this person. That at five minutes, I'm done. I'm not going to do that again. There's enough people on the planet. I never have to worry about that one again. Just go to the next one. And typically it's 30 seconds to a minute and a half, maybe two minutes most before I find an address and a phone number, right? So again, if I have that master list and I write every absentee owner in my notebook, and then I just open up my notebook during my realtor time and I start researching and find a phone number and an address, then when I'm done with that research time, now I've got an hour of lead generation time. I open up my absentee owner notebook and I start looking for the first ones that have a phone number and an address. Because I know if I call them and get them on the phone, now, this is my first round, address and a phone number. I'm going to call them. That way I can just say, do you still have the property at XYZ Street? Great. I've got it. I took a picture of that property and I was going to send it to you. I don't think I have your home address. What's the best mailing address? If we get into conversation, right? So after I go through all of my addresses and phone numbers, now I can go to my phone numbers and keep lead generating if I'm done with the first batch. Now I can keep lead generating and just call and I know I've got to get their address before the end of that call or else I've just got a lead, not a contact, right? So that's how that process works. Tomorrow, man, I burned it all up. Now I'm just down to names again. I open up the notebook. I start researching again, finding, sometimes I'm going through the same name that I might've spent before. And I'm looking again, if I find it on some random place that I find it. Guys, I have found addresses and phone numbers in posts on their Facebook page. I find, their, I find agents' birthdays by their posts. There will be a thread of posts about 20, 30 pages long of happy birthday. So if they don't have their birthday in their, their, their um, profile, I can probably find it in their thread. <laughs> So it's just stuff like that, you know? So for real estate agents, I send a birthday, a birthday card just to keep you in mind for your real estate. So anyway, that, that master list is I keep feeding in addresses and phone numbers. And then, then when it's time to lead generate, I'm just calling. If you do this method, you will, that notebook will be your running notebook. And when I do call them and get a hold of them, I put them in command. I cross, I black permanently marker them out of my notebook. I don't need them in there anymore if they're in command because in command I've drip, I've started the drip plan that sends them things that are going on in the community and how many listings came on this week, how many went off the market last week. Those are the ideal things that an absentee owner would want to know in a market, right? I could send them some rental information, articles on this and that, but I would create a drip plan around that. So does that answer your question? I hope. I have one question. Yeah. How to get the rental people like? Say that again. I'm sorry. 
if I want to rent somebody, like how do I know people wants to rent the house or rent the apartment? Okay. How do yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, apartment buildings are real easy. <laughs> so you can find people in apartments. They're probably moving every year. Your bigger apartment buildings. Um, yeah, I, there's probably lists you can buy. I don't know if anybody else targets rentals. I know you guys get paid commissions on leases, right? <clears throat> so before you even track down rentals, make sure you're talking about a lease opportunity for maybe a building that you're representing um, because you can make a lot more money selling mm -hmm. real estate as well. But leasing is a good revenue source. So it's going to be, a, I mean, I'm going to start with the easy one in apartment buildings that want to go to housing because the housing rentals are usually listed on MLS or condos are listed on MLS. Your apartment buildings probably typically aren't listed on MLS, right? Do you guys have a rental market on your MLS? Is that a whole world? I don't think so. Yeah. Yes. A rental yes, market. Yes, what do you mean? Do. Like, am I able to find rentals on our MLS? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you can make money off rentals. Now, if you're looking for renters because you want to help first time home buyers, mm -hmm. then you could just pick a neighborhood, go through the tax records. And if the owner's address is different than the property address, it's probably a good chance that's a renter. You could right. even find, you could even find like based in the community, like a, a say, if you want to go to Pond, you want an entire apartment complex called Pond Meadows, for example. So then you can locate property that's been leased for the past year or two years or whatever. And then you'll narrow it down to specifically to that apartment complex. Now, what I hope you will do first is get every name off of Facebook and every name out of your phone and every name off your in inbox and your email and your outbox, set box in your email. And start with that list. That list is going to be worth a lot more money than working with a renter buying for the first time. That's what I do after my second hour of real estate. After I do that the first hour, now I'll do that the second hour. See what I'm today, saying? Before the class, I went today one hour door knocking. None of the person are open because they have the ring bell. They say we don't want to come out and yep. you can just leave the card there. Yeah, or think of something better to leave. Um, think of what's going to be a value proposition you can leave behind. Um, I mean, I've had people say that with door knocking, they've been super successful. In fact, it's been in this class. I remember, I don't remember if it was you, Scott, or somebody else, door knocking during COVID. It's like, you know, if, if door knocking has been successful for you and you're good at it and you get people to answer the door, then during COVID, you just have to probably step back and have something on the porch. I, I don't know, a squirt bottle or something like that because you're good at it. Um, if you haven't ever done it before and you've never had success at it, maybe that maybe this isn't the time to start a door knocking campaign. Um, I mean, if anything, this is just how my brain works. If I wanted to door knock, I've just I've been to something that told me this was the thing. And I'm not saying it's door knocking. I'm just picking on one particular item. I would probably look at who I know in a certain neighborhood that I'm already friends with, and I would door knock their neighborhood. Hey, I'm a friend of the Joneses down the street, and I just want to introduce myself, especially if you have a past client. I mean, man, door knock the neighborhoods where you just sold a house. If I'm going to door knock, I'm going to always go the route that I've got the best chance versus going cold and seeing what happens. If I just sold a house in a neighborhood, I'm absolutely going to door knock and I want to door knock. I'm going to door knock all probably the whole block around that house and say, you know, knock and say when they when the doorbell rings or whatever, I'm just going to say, hey, real estate agent sell a lot of houses in the neighborhood, even if they're talking to me through the ring. I don't know if you notice the house down the street or around the corner or whatever just sold. The Jones couple is super nice couple. I, I do know for a fact they love apple pies and chocolate chip cookies, right? So I just wanted to call and introduce them to the neighborhood, and I was doing that for them. Okay. Well, how many of you right now are going, holy crap, why does he make this sound so easy? <laughs> right? I mean, have fun. And again, 98% of the people aren't moving in the neighborhood when you're door knocking. So once you get a conversation started, then you can say, so what is it you like about this neighborhood? I want to make sure I tell the Joneses about that too. If I can get, I'll get into a conversation with 30% of them, right? 
what do you like about the neighborhood? What do you love about this area? I want to relay that to the Joneses and tell them that I met you, right? And it's like, who else do you know who might be leaving the neighborhood? They've got some other friends that would like to live over here. Totally different angle. <coughs> and it's not, the, hi, this is Brad Corn with Keller Williams, wondering if you're thinking about buying or selling. I, I can't even use that because I know 98% of them won't be. So I can't even use that one anymore. I mean, it's a great script for finding the next deal. Does that make sense? So have a good reason to be in there knocking on the door. So you can't, you don't just have to leave them your business card. And, and I got to stop right here and just say for a second, that is the old way. We've, we've done real estate this way forever. And we got a less than 1% return the entire time we ever did it. And nobody back in my early days was really focused on relationships like this. And Gary Keller, let me just tell you this, Keller Williams, for the fact that we have to put Keller Williams on our signs, I can tell you original Gary Keller, he would have fought to not have Keller Williams on the sign. He was like, nobody cares about Keller Williams. It's a, it's a, it's a local relationship business. I want to help the agents get into relationship with their people, be top of mind. I don't care whether it says Keller Williams. The only reason we have Keller Williams on our signs, from what I remember the conversation being, is it's board rules. <laughs> I mean, it is disclosure and having lawsuit protection for the consumer, for the bad people. And that's why we have to have a company name on there, because we have a broker representing the legal side of everything that we do. That's the only reason Keller Williams is on the sign. Otherwise, Gary Keller would turn us all loose and go, put your own name on it. They don't know who I am in Austin, Texas. So think about it that way as well, guys, that, you know, in the old days, we had to do it that way. And we were just out pounding it out and nobody was getting, nobody was selling a thousand homes a year like they are today. Nobody. When I moved to Kansas City, the top agent in Kansas City at the time I moved back here in 1995 was selling $40 million of real estate. Top agent out of 10,000 agents, $40,000. Today, it's millions. I mean, it's billions. Heck, probably most of the people in your office are selling 30 and 40, $40 million worth of real estate. So the world has changed and the relationship-based marketing, we are now realizing you can sell a thousand homes a year because everybody's moving. And if you just stay in touch with them better than everybody else, you're going to capture that business. So I'm not here to talk you out of door knocking. I totally started my business when I didn't know anybody in my community by door knocking, doing open houses. And I, but I stayed in touch with every single person that came through that door and every person that answered their door. And, you know, if they don't answer the door, go to, there's another door right next door. Just keep knocking. It's a numbers game. Cool. Anybody else have anything pressing they want to ask before we check out for the day? Otherwise, you guys have my email. You have my cell phone. Text me directly. What do you guys think of today? Good stuff? Thank you. Yes, thank you. All right. Well, congratulations to yourselves for investing the hour. And uh, just love thank to keep hearing your feedback. Thank you. Back.